Welcome to Just Roots Kitchen Intuition. This month, we're excited to make something called a dosa, which is a South Indian crepe, and it is absolutely delicious. And this time, we're going to be featuring masala dosas, which are potato dosas. So it's potatoes in a mixture of spices with some onion. That's going to be sort of like the filling for our dosa. And then we're also going to... Um, have some chutney and veg local vegetables to put on that dosa as well. So if you've had a crepe before, you've probably had something very similar to a dosa. It's a really thin um, sort of flat bread-like substitute. One wonderful thing about dosas is they are naturally gluten-free and naturally uh, vegan. So the gluten, the, the way that they make this work without gluten is this is a product that is fermented lentils with fermented rice, and it has an incredible taste and texture once it's been cooked. The difficult part of doses are making them just like crepes, but uh, I've been experimenting a little bit with different types of pans, and I found it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be in a number of ways. What's gonna set us up for success for this meal is just figuring out everything we need. So we're gonna look at the ingredients in the kit very quickly, and then what supplies I like to have on hand to make doses. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead and start off with the dosa batter. So this is, you can make your own fermented rice and fermented lentil dosa batter. It's a little bit tough. And there's this amazing local New England company that makes stone ground dosa batter. So this is gluten-free and vegan, and it's ready to serve. I'm very excited to get to play with this some more. We also got this amazing, it's sort of an oil or butter substitute, ghee. Uh, ghee is actually dairy-free because of how it's clarified. Um, however, if you have a uh, an allergy to casein, the protein found in dairy, you're still going to have a reaction to ghee. So just keep that in mind for anyone who is dairy free. Um, of course, it is made with animal ingredients. And one neat thing is it's uh, shelf stable. The reason why ghee was used in this kit is because it, well, it goes with, with the meal. It's often used in South Indian cooking, but it has a really high, you can cook it on a high temperature without ruining the oil causing smoking or burning. So it's a really good high heat cooking um, fat. I can't use ghee, so I'm gonna be using a combination of like dairy-free butter and oil, but ghee is a great way to go if you're able to consume it. We have the another from the same place, a uh, chutney sauce. So this is a little bit smoky and spicy, and it's just going to be a nice drizzle on top of our dosas. Uh, we have ground local ginger. This is from Old Friends Farm. Very special. We made a spice packet for everybody, and I'm going to go over some other spices that you might want to add to your dosas. The key to these like amazing Indian flavors is having a lot of toasted spices, which we'll we'll do a little bit today. Oh, sorry about the dog. I'm going to pause for one second. Sorry, guys. We've got barky dogs here. Some other spices that I like to have in any... One second. I'm going to put him in. So sorry about that. Okay, some other spices that I like to use in Indian cooking, you may or may not have these on hand and they're not necessary, but some nice warm flavors that come in like ground uh, cardamom, ground coriander. These are curry leaves that I grew from a curry tree. Uh, mustard seed or regular mustard, turmeric, of course, cumin, and then we're gonna use some black pepper and salt. So make sure you have some of that. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be using olive oil. You can really just use ghee. I also melted some butter that I can be using with mine. Um, just because it's easier to brush it on in liquid form. Um, 
then we also have these amazing Mycoterra local mushrooms. We're going to be sauteing those, some potatoes that we need to peel and boil. So make sure you have a pot of water heating up. For, that's going to be our first step here. Um, local, or these are from Just Roots, spring onions, and then some greens that we're going to be using. And then in terms of supplies, of course, a cutting board and a knife. And then we have um, a spatula that's metal is super, super helpful. So I'm gonna be using this to scrape under the dosa. Sometimes it helps to have something a little bendy. So I use sort of like a spatula that is heat proof. And then I have a, a little whisk and that sometimes helps when you open up your dosa batter, you'll notice it might be separated. So it's nice to whisk it up a little bit. Measuring cups, really you only roughly need that for the, the uh, spinach green, so you might not need it. Some measuring spoons for the spices. <clears throat> and then we have um, a basting sort of like, th this is really nice for painting your oil on top of your um, dosa. So if you really enjoy making doses, you might want to buy one of these. It's like a dollar um, and you can rub the top of it and you'll see that technique, but it's not necessary. Paper towels also work. I do have a few paper towels on hand for making the oil or ghee really smooth in the pan and so we don't have too much. A potato peeler and a ladle. If you don't have a ladle, let us know. We will come up with a different idea, but a ladle is super, super helpful. We're going to actually both ladle into the pan and use the top of the ladle to sort of swirl the, um, the crepe. And then I have a bowl for my potatoes, a colander. I know, I know. And in terms of pans, just make sure if, you, if you're just joining us, if you don't yeah. mind, mute just so people can hear, but feel free to ask questions if you have any. Um, you can use a nonstick or a cast iron for your dosa. I experimented with both and they both worked fine for me as long as you kept um, the pan nice and with a good amount of liquid so there isn't too much sticking. And you're going to need two pans, one for your veggies and one for your dosas. Then the last thing that we need is um, if you I know people just joined in a pot that we're going to boil our potatoes in. So let's get some water on the stove to get those boiling because that's our first step. Okay, now I'm going to clear up my station and get chopping. So first thing we're going to do is peel our potatoes. And then we're going to cut them into roughly one inch cubes. So you might want to have a colander on hand in the sink ready. We're going to cook them until they're pork tender. And so, of course, the smaller that you end up cutting these, the better. Um, we're going to want to cook them rather fast just to be able to get through um, this class on time. But it doesn't, you know, one inch should be just fine. So just peeling the potatoes. And if your water comes to boil a little bit early, just put it on, on low to hold that heat with the, with the cover. You can stick it in. I'm just peeling my potatoes. You could also use a paring knife if you have one of those. Okay. My station clean. Okay, and they don't have to be perfectly peeled. And in fact, you can really, you if you like to leave the skin on to have more fiber, you're welcome to do that. It's just in this dish, you, it's a very soft potato. It's a soft bite inside of a crunchy, crunchy wrap. So I think it's kind of nice to peel them, but generally 
I tend to err on the side of not peeling. And then we're going to slice these up a little bit. So I'm just going to do some lateral cuts. And then we'll cut them into little cubes. Cut them in half. And soon, if you're already a step ahead of me, you can certainly drop your potatoes in. Doesn't hurt to add a little pinch of salt, but I'm not going to. And you can start washing your spring onions if you haven't done that yet. So these, by the way, if you haven't had onions look like this before, um, these onions are uncured. They're not cured onions, they're fresh. So they're harvested a little bit early. And then, um, and you don't put them through the curing process when they dry out. And I think they're just super special to have at this time of year. All right. And we're just going to cook these until the potatoes are fork tender. You don't need to cover them with a lid. So once your water's up to temp, you can go ahead and drop those in. And then we're going to start chopping, washing and chopping our oyster mushrooms and our spring onion. And I'm going to take just a second to give mine a little rinse. And we're not going to use all the onion. If you're a huge onion fan and you want things to taste really oniony, you can certainly do that. Um, but I'm going to use about two of these. And another note is that these are just kind of like scallions. So if you want to hang on to the greens and use them in something else, I think they go really well in stir fries, just sliced into pieces. You're welcome to do that. So I'm just peeling the outer layer, just generally where the most dirt is. I'm going to hang on to this one. I don't think we need it today. Give these a quick rinse. And my water just started boiling, so I'm going to drop in my potatoes and just keep an eye on them. I'll maybe put in a timer for 10 minutes. Down after I cut potatoes. Feel a little slime. So again, you can use every part of this. I'm just going to stick with holding on to these for, for another dish. I bet they would be fabulous if you dunked, dunked them in some olive oil, salt and pepper, and stuck them on the grill. It's one of my favorite things. If you get our newsletter at Best Roots, you probably, and you partake in our CSA, you probably got a chance to read how much I love grilled alliums in our notes from the kitchen. So what I did is I just cut these in half and then I turned them sideways and I'm just cutting them into ribbons sort of like I would with a leaf or something like that. You'll notice they have a lot a sweeter scent um, and they actually bring a sweeter profile than a lot of them cured onions. And it doesn't really matter how thick these are. I mean, you don't want them too thick, but slice them up nice. I'll show you what I've done. That's about the thickness. So I'm using two of those fresh onions, holding on to the rest at well, the last one and then we also have the ends that we are not using but if you want to you're welcome to okay so we've got our potatoes cooking and we sliced our onion we're going to do our um, oyster mushrooms and we're going to get these onions sauteing so if you have ghee you can cook everything in your ghee just keep it nice and simple with one oil 
You can use butter, you can use olive oil, whatever is your pleasure. I'm using about two tablespoons. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those right on there in the olive oil, not adding salt and pepper yet. And I'm going to bring that on to medium heat. And in the meantime, I'm going to start processing my mushrooms. You can wash these if you want, but these are um, organic mushrooms. I know they haven't been sprayed with anything, so I feel pretty comfortable just cooking them as is. They, their growth mediums are clean and sterile. Uh, but generally, if I get mushrooms from a grocery store, I'm going to want to rinse those. Um, if you haven't had oysters before, they have a really mild flavor. Uh, they're just a great mushroom to work with. Very earthy. I usually cut off the stem if there is any on yours. Sometimes this company removes them anyways. But I'm just slicing into decent sized chunks. One thing, of course, I forgot to do this, so we're going to do a little separate pan doing it, is the key to all of this is to heat up your spices. Sometimes I like to do it in a large pan like this if I'm in a rush, but I really like doing it in a smaller container if you have any smaller pot, um, and I fill it with a little bit of ghee, butter, or oil, and then I dump my spices in, and we're going to toast those spices, and then I would pour it on top of what we're cooking with. Um, just because I often burn the spices when it's on a really large flat pan, but you can really do it either way. I'm going to use some butter for this, some melted butter. About a quarter or a half um, tablespoon. And then we're gonna go ahead and start with some of our spices. So the curry powder is by choice. If you really like curry powder, you can use a, a whole one, two tablespoons up to because that's really gonna be what's flavoring our meal. Um, if you're not so crazy about it, just from smelling it, try a little bit less. You could do anything from a teaspoon to a tablespoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out. I'm going to do one tablespoon of this curry powder. And I'm going to put it directly into my um, half tablespoon of ghee, butter, oil, whatever you're using. And then same for ginger. So if you're not crazy about ginger, then use a half teaspoon. I'm going to use a whole one because I just absolutely love it. Tablespoon, I'm sorry. And I hear my little dog whining at the door, so I'm going to grab it. Do so much to make sure he stays quiet during these workshops, but apparently a UPS guy came and kept knocking at the door, so I apologize for that. And we might use a little fork to stir these in your oil and you're going to turn that on a pretty low heat like medium low because you don't want it to be too hot you can also use some of the spices we mentioned before you could use a little bit of turmeric mustard curry leaves cardamom or coriander cumin but no absolute need to so heating our spices in oil is really going to release the aromatics. It's going to develop the spices a lot more, and it's a key to a lot of curries um, used in a lot of Asian cooking in India and Thailand and tons of places. And it's just a really, I now that I do it, I never want to go back because it's incredible. I also like to toast my rice when it's dry. 
and a little bit of olive oil to get it some flavor. Okay, great. So our onions are cooking, our potatoes are boiling. We're gonna test them in a minute. Um, we'll throw in the rest of our mushrooms once our uh, um, onions turn translucent. Great. And I'm just using wooden spoons for that process. Put in my onion and my mushroom. And potatoes still got a little bit of time. And the potatoes are going to get mixed with all of these veggies, and that's going to be the wonderful sort of filling inside of these crepes. I really, I've had, when I've gone out to eat dosas, I, they've been served with a number of different chutneys, and chutneys are sort of like... Um, a slow roasted fruit or vegetable with vinegar, often sugar, and it's kind of this amazing dip that you can put on top of these and the sweetness is really nice. We have a cooking workshop that's recorded on our YouTube um, where we made an apple chutney in the past, so you're free to check that out if you're interested. Um, right now is the season for rhubarb chutney as well. Mango chutney is delicious, so those go really well with this. And um, I'm really excited to do the, uh, try out this garlic chili chutney. It's a little different from what I've had. Make sure, I know we're balancing a lot of things, but you're gonna wanna stir your spices as you're heating them a little bit. Stir your onions, stir your mushrooms once they go in. Okay, great. Now we have a minute to just catch our breath. Um, as we get all this stuff prepared, and then we'll start with our dose of batter. I'm gonna get a little bit cleaned up while we wait. And as I mentioned before, I did um, pull out a bowl, which I'm gonna put all my filling into for later, so that might be helpful. Another key to having a really good um, crepe is to, to make sure your pan is sufficiently heated. There's a perfect zone between too hot and not hot enough where you can burn your crepe or it just turns out with the wrong texture. It's not crunchy and golden like we want it to be. Um, so experimentation is fine and mistakes are fine and you know, do one and adjust and make another. And throughout my practicing, I've made some that are absolutely perfect and some the next round that aren't so nice. And generally it has to do with temperature. And the other thing it has to do with is if I have too much butter or ghee or too little butter or ghee. So we're gonna show you how to make sure you have enough. Oh my god, the smell of the spices is so amazing. Melding together. I'm just continuing to cook that. My onions are starting to get translucent. So I know I can add my mushrooms soon. The amount of spinach you want to use is your preference. It is going to be cooked, so it's really going to sort of um, soften and take up a lot less space. It's gonna seem like a quarter or less of what you actually put in. So you can do two to three cups roughly. Usually for me, like a handful, a nice size handful is about a cup. So I'm gonna be doing about three of those mixed in with my vegetables. And we're not going to add those yet. Those are gonna get added after um, we, we cook our mushrooms. Another thing, if your potatoes are finishing up, the recipe suggested, this is something I haven't done, I've only just used water or butter as more of a liquid, but the recipe suggests hanging on to a tablespoon or two of your potato water, and that, that gets added once all your vegetables are mixed with the, um, with the potatoes, and you actually just use it to soften things and make it a little bit more mushy. 
So if you want it to be a little bit moister, you can save uh, maybe like one to two tablespoons of that potato water that they've been boiling in. It's nice and starchy. Um, so just remember that if you're going to drain your pota potatoes ahead of me. Still not quite fork tender. Need a little more time for me. All right, I have the color that I, it's probably a little difficult to see, but they're translucent. Maybe a few orange that are still clumped. Add in my mushrooms. We want these to be pretty well cooked. If there's any burning happening at the bottom of your pan, use more ghee, butter, oil, whatever it is you're using. <laughs> and doses can be stuffed with any of your favorite things. In fact, I marinated some chicken um, and I'm gonna have that chicken inside of my doses. Maybe with some greens, with fresh greens as well. You can make different sauces to put in them. Use different vegetables. And I do encourage you, if you like Indian style cooking, to check out our video um, where we made vegetable fritters with that chutney. It's super, super tasty. If you think your spices are nice and toasty and, and they're bubbling and they have a really great fragrance, you can go ahead and pour those in. Maybe you did it in the same pan. I want to get those in there with your mushroom and your onion. Make sure to get that a good stir. And that's going to change the color dramatically. And again, you might end up wanting to use a little more butter or a little more oil just to prevent sticking on your pan. Don't forget, it might seem like a lot, but you have, it's going to be added to a bunch of potatoes. Right. So we're going to want to get out some salt and pepper. We're going to add that to taste. Um, I think I, I generally like to use about a half teaspoon of salt and then go from there and see how it is. The, um, the masala uh, dosa, this batter, it does taste a little bit salty. I think just like the fermentation process. So you don't need to add too much salt, um, but do that. I, I never like to tell people how much salt and pepper to use just because it's really, people have dramatically different tastes for that. And we'll salt and pepper it once we add all of the ingredients together. So this should just take another minute or so. The mushrooms will be pretty quick to cook. They're smelling amazing. Great time to test out your potatoes, see if you're pork tender. It's really going to depend on how small you cut them. So mine are pretty much there. Yeah, I can push them apart with my finger or a fork. So now is the time for me to drain and strain. Oh, uh, we just had a nice message in the chat, RNA, looks like. Someone said, can I add fresh garlic to both mushrooms, batter, and potatoes? Love garlic. I do too. If we had garlic in our kit, it would be in there for me. Absolutely. Great, great question. For me, always the more the merrier with garlic, and it's such an amazing food. So good for you. 
All right. So I'm gonna make sure I save just a smidgen of that water so I can sort of lubricate this, um, the potatoes if I want it to be a little bit more moist. So that's why I'm using this. Um, and I'm pouring it into my strainer. All right. And it looks like my mushrooms are pretty much cooked all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Pour them into my bowl that I'll be mixing my potatoes in. Got a beautiful yellow color. I'm gonna cook a little bit of spinach here. Three, two to three cups, up to you. This spinach does have pretty long stems. Um, so that is a little bit more rough and it may take a little more time to cook because of the stems, or if you don't mind that it's a little bit crunchy, that could also be delicious. And sometimes I like to just add a dash of water to my spinach when I'm cooking them. So a little bit of oil, a little bit of water. And that just helps them wilt quicker without burning. You can even use whatever container had your spices on it. Drop in a little water. Great. I'm going to start. I'm just going to do a half a teaspoon of salt and where is that? And we'll it on the table. So I'm going to do a one half teaspoon of salt, and I might add, end up adding more, but I'd rather add too little first. And then about an eighth teaspoon of pepper for me, black pepper. Use as much as you like. See if we want extra liquid. I'm going to pour in those potatoes first, and there was a lot of liquid at the bottom, so. I don't think I'll be using it, but we'll see. Get that all mixed in. And your potatoes might be sort of getting a little mushier. I like to leave some decent sized chunks, um, but it's okay if your potatoes were really well cooked, it might start to mash on its own and that's fine. You can also, if you prefer it to mash them, you can use like a little potato masher. And we'll probably have to wait a second for this to cool before we taste it and see if we want to add more salt, pepper, or any seasonings. And don't forget, we're also going to have <clears throat> this amazing chili garlic. So give it a taste also and see if you like it. See how salty it is, see how spicy it is. Very spicy. <coughs> so maybe not too, too much pepper. But it's really good, it's so smoky. <coughs> and I swallowed wrong. <coughs> My spinach is just starting to get wilty. I'm going to leave it on for another minute or so. And in a second, I'm going to move the cameras. <clears throat> So it might be a little disorienting for a second so that you can see my pan better where I'm going to be making the batter. Mm. 
Can you really see how much spinach cooks down? It's just wild. Maybe you really like greens and you want to add a little more, just like some people really like garlic and want to add that. Do whatever you like. There kind of is no wrong thing to do when you're making veggie filled dosa. Okay. I'm going to stir that all up and give it a taste. Tastes perfect to me. I don't think I would add any more salt. Mm. So good. Okay. Keep that on warm. <clears throat> I'm going to let anyone ask a question if you need a minute. Um, <clears throat> and we're moving on to our dosa. That we're actually going to be making our doses. And that's the crepe part. All right. I really like using tools for this part. But if you don't have all the tools, use what you have. Do your best. It's not a big deal. So, of course, I mentioned we're going to ladle. That's We're going to use the ladle to ladle the batter in. And then we're going to um, sort of use it to spread. Whisk, we're whisking up the batter because it tends to separate when it sits in the fridge. Some kind of like spatula for lifting up the dosa when you're ready to flip it. Not necessary, but I like to use this to brush on your ghee or butter on the other side of the dosa before you're ready to flip it up. So I'm gonna get my pan pretty much on medium, medium high heat. You're going to want it pretty, pretty hot. A nonstick works and I'm using a cast iron. I know a lot of people have those on hand and you can certainly do it if you don't have a nonstick. So one thing I highly suggest doing, you can use it, if you're not using ghee, you can use a combination of butter and oil. So I just mix those two together. <clears throat> I melted a little butter in here. And what I'm going to do is dip a paper towel into the butter. And you do not want oil pool, pooling on your pan at all, which is why we're going to use a paper towel. I'm just going to spread it quickly. I want every surface covered in this ghee, butter, or oil all around where your crepe's going to be. But I do not want any big oil blobs. So I'm getting that on there. And I'm going to hold up the pan just for a second before it gets too hot. See, there's nothing dripping. It's just beautiful and glossy. And now we're going to wait for that pan to get to temperature. So we want it pretty, pretty hot to make our doses. In the meantime, if you have something, a spoon or one of these, you're going to just mix up that batter, get the stuff from the bottom up to the top, and make sure the all the ingredients are well blended in there. Everything's going to happen pretty quick once you've started cooking. And just something to note that dosas are going to, when you lay out your batter, it's going to appear like there's like holes or tons of tiny bubbles. And that's okay. We actually, that's completely normal. And, and we want that in the dosa. Okay, if anyone gets like a little woozy... From screen stuff, I'm going to move my screen over and my station so you guys can see what I'm doing. Pan is heating up. Here we go. Journey with me. Okay. I want to make sure you can see very well. Does that look good to you? Let me a little over. Okay. So it's still not quite as hot as I want it to be, but it will be very soon. Make sure we're covered in that oil or butter, whatever it is. Put your ladle on the ready. These really are only going to take a couple minutes on either side to cook. So um, 
it does happen pretty fast. Sometimes what I do, if I want to make a huge batch and serve everything all at once, then I'm going to put my oven on warm, like the lowest setting it could go. And you can just lay them in the oven on a sheet pan or something. You could also cover them with parchment paper if you'd like to. Okay. The pan just started smoking, just a tiny bit. It was probably even hard for you guys to see, so I know I'm ready. <laughs> I'm going to fill this ladle, drop it right in the middle, and then use the bottom to spread the dough stuff. So I want to get all of the unevenness spread about the pan. As much as I can. And then you want to leave it alone. I'm going to let it cook like that. Nice, medium, high, high heat. So you're going to start to see the bubbling. And it looks like, oh no, there's weak spots. It's thicker here and thinner there. That's going to be OK. It actually makes it quite nice. While that cooks, so I don't get too tempted to flip it too soon, I'm going to go ahead and put some stuff away. You can also use your spinach fresh if you prefer. You don't have to um, cook it in if you still, which you do. You have tons of leftover spinach. Maybe toss that in like a little vinaigrette and serve that with your dosa. Now, sometimes I do like to check. This is kind of why having a metal spatula is nice for me. You can use the spatula to sort of feel how far along the dosa is. And if it's sticking at all to the pan and it's a little hard to get up, it's not ready. It's kind of just like making pancakes. So it's not quite ready there. One thing that does happen more on cast irons is you get a little bit browner center on the pan, which I think tastes delicious. And that was a little bit different from my, um, when I used a nonstick, I didn't really have that so much. So once it starts coming up with a little bit more ease, you're probably ready to flip. Mine's not quite there. I just sometimes like to loosen the size. And then once you can get a little bit under there. You can lift and flip. And that's exactly what we want. We got a nice golden brown color. Now, if your pan is not thoroughly, um, if it's still, I just applied butter, so there's plenty of butter left on it. But that's when you want to start using your brush. You can just like this brush the other side of it with a little bit of ghee or butter. And if you don't have a brush, you can just put a little bit more in the pan or use your paper towel. Again, just dot and brush over your beautiful dough set. So that's gonna sit for another minute. And then we'll just keep making a few until we have a nice, nice collection of them. And we can also plate one. Together. Yeah, and again, these spatulas work super well. If you want to relocate it, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, So the white means not quite yet. That side's not ready. If it's still really white on the underside, you really, the most ideal is this golden brown. The regular brown on the inside is great too. You don't want it too burnt, but a nice balance of the two. 
And this could be a messy dinner for sure because they don't always hold up perfectly. Like mine, I have a little hole in the middle and I like to eat it with a fork. But sometimes it works like a little sandwich. Now, if you're getting way too much burning happening, you probably have the heat up too high or you don't have enough of your cooking liquid or fat. Amazing. First one down. If there's any like brown scrapings on the pan, you're gonna wanna get those as much out as you can. Again, doing a little drip. I'd say my pan is a little hot. Get those surfaces coated. Batter. You can make them really any size as long as it fits in your pan. Spread as evenly as you can. You can also tilt to get the thicker sections broken up a little bit more. Now, just because we're here, assembling needs a nice scoop of this beautiful masala. Leave it. I'll bring it over here. And your second one might cook a little bit faster than your first one, just because the pan is already really hot. Like this one. Just be patient with getting it flipped. Mm. Oh my goodness, the batter's so good. And I might just do a little light drizzle. Have it. You can sort of eat it like a burrito. Looks just like the one in our recipe. Maybe a little less pretty. <clears throat> Once you get the swing of this, it can be such an easy night meal. You can maybe even experiment with making your own batter. Great. Move you back. I don't know about you guys, but I'm dying to try it. Remember, this hot sauce is pretty hot. Don't do what I did before. So good. Such a simple vegetarian meal. I love the crunch of the spinach. Mmm. So one thing to note, if you use too much butter, your crepe is not going to be crispy. Your dosa won't be crispy. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to keep pounding these out until class is over. Make sure to stir your batter when you can. The thinner, the quicker it cooks. Does anyone have any questions before we sign off for the night so everybody can enjoy their food? No? Well, thank you so much for joining us. Make uh, Just so you know, this video will be posted on our YouTube channel where all of our previous classes are. And we also have a set of kitchen skills videos that are edited short and concise, uh, concise. They're not full-on cooking classes, but we demonstrate tons of different videos from making apple cider vinegar to making kimchi at home. So make sure to check those out and subscribe if you like the videos. Um, all right, guys. Well, happy, happy doses, happy masala doses. Enjoy your food and thanks for joining us.
Just Roots says very, thank you very, very much. 